There's a reason that I called this video how to take care of your bull python in 2020 because there's a lot of information still floating around the hobby from the 80s or 90s or a time when the internet wasn't so prevalent and it wasn't as easy to get the best information. So to clear all that up, today we're going to talk about how to take care of your ball python with the best information available. My name's Adam, you're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Bull pythons are one of the most commonly kept reptiles in the entire pet trade. These guys are known as the starter reptile or the best reptile you should get as a beginner and there's a couple reasons why I think there's information you need to know before you go ahead and get a ball python. So let's just get right into it. What size do these animals which come from sub-Saharan Africa from a place where it's rather dry but need burrows and hides and a different humidity inside well, what's, what's the size? How big do they get? Well, this is Pikachu, and Pikachu is a full-grown male ball python. In general, a male's gonna get between three and four feet-ish. Sometimes, of course, there's outliers. Four feet, in my opinion, is pretty much where you're gonna find a male. Females can get all the way to six feet, but generally about five is where you're gonna find them. Medusa is the mate for Pikachu. Pikachu and Medusa have um, bred before and they've made babies before via egg because pythons do lay eggs and that's how they procreate. She is het for albino. I'm not gonna get too much into genetics, but obviously he is lacking some pigment. He is an albino. Medusa uh, has the gene, but doesn't show it. Just like blue eyes, if your mom has blue eyes and your dad doesn't and you've got blue eyes, that means, well, your dad was het for blue eyes. So four feet in general to six feet is how far you're gonna find these guys without liars on either side. So how big of an enclosure do you need for such a big animal? I'm sure it needs to be rather large, right? Well, sort of, it doesn't need to be small or it can't be small. And I'm sure you've heard before, ah, oh, ball python can stay its whole life in a 10 gallon or 20 gallon or something ridiculous like that. 55 gallons or the equivalent in my opinion is bare minimum for a male ball python for a female I'd much rather see you have a 75 gallon or equivalent now I say equivalent because glass enclosures with screen tops are not the best way to go for ball pythons because They need a little bit higher of humidity, which we're gonna get into in a second so some better options for you are things like PVC enclosures uh, so what you're gonna see here is a PVC enclosure. It's an enclosure made of PVC, it's molded with one piece, and it has a door that flips up, some of them slide, it doesn't matter. Where Medusa lives in something that's made of wood or melamine. Melamine is the same thing that your cabinets might be made of in your kitchen. Uh, just basically particle board with a piece of whatever melamine is made of over top of it so it resists moisture. Either way, it doesn't have a screen top so the humidity stays in, and of course plastic doesn't allow humidity to escape, so that's why I chose PVC for my buddy Pikachu and uh, basically any other ones that I'm going to get, I'm gonna get more PVCs because they work so well. This is a four foot by two foot by one foot. They don't need a ton of space because they don't climb a lot. If you give them the opportunity, like you'll see Medusa doing here, they will climb a little bit, but you don't need you know, a skyscraper or anything like that. Uh, one foot is plenty of space. If you wanna give them 18 inches or 24, whatever, as long as the parameters for heat humidity are appropriate. And if you're wondering why they're called a ball python, you'll notice that if I kind of boop his little snoot there, he's gonna protect himself. Uh, they ball up to protect themselves and that's why they're called ball pythons. Uh, or if you're from the UK, that side of the pond, royal pythons is how you might find them classified or named, but eh, that's either neither here nor there. Let's get into heat and humidity. So with any reptile or anything that is cold blooded, you're gonna need to make sure that they have somewhere to go to be warm and somewhere to go to be cool because they're ectotherms. They can't control their own body temperature. With a ball python, it's a pretty easy range to, to get, right? It's, it's nothing crazy, it's not a desert species. So you're not gonna need to have like zero humidity in a 140 degree basking spot. It's much easier than that. Your hot spot, you're gonna wanna be between 87 and 94-ish degrees. Now, care guide, this is a care guide, which means that if you're one degree on this side or one degree on that side, it's not gonna kill your snake. Pikachu is not gonna die because it's, you know, 91 instead of 92. You're, you're gonna be completely fine, but you don't wanna have the entire enclosure be that warm. You need an ambient temperature, which is gonna have a range, right? So you're gonna want hot, 
to cool. And your ambient temperature on your cool side, right around 72 or higher, 75 you'll read sometimes. I prefer right around 75, uh, all the way up to 82 for the warm side ambient temperature. So you'll notice that the air temperature is gonna be different than the surface temperature uh, on the basking spot. And because these guys do really like to take in heat from a heat source on the bottom, a great way to do this is with a heat pad or heat tape or something like that, which makes uh, the enclosure kind of open up a bunch of possibilities because you'll notice I have a rack system here, right? And on the rack system, I use a thermostat, which is very important, that's connected to uh, heat tape, and then the heat tape warms up to a certain temperature and that's how they get their heat. Or over top, you can use something like a uh, radiant heat panel, and that's what you're gonna see here. And you'll notice that the radiant heat panel is wet because I miss them and I, I, I make sure that they have the right humidity, which we're gonna get into in a moment. They're waterproof, which is great. And I like the option of having that because with the PVCs, I don't think that the heat permeates well enough for, or gets hot enough for a ball python, which needs it warmer than say, a colubrid like a hognose snake, like you'll see here. So I prefer a radiant heat panel, uh, and the same thing for my skin here as well. This is a great option for heating your PVC. And as far as a substrate for your animal, for your ball python inside the enclosure, I always recommend something like uh, coconut core type substrate, something that holds moisture really well, uh, but it doesn't get super dusty and doesn't dry out too much, but doesn't say stopping wet. And if it does get wet, it, it doesn't mold like an aspen would because they do need their humidity to be at a certain percentage. Their humidity is actually kind of a pretty narrow window of what is ideal for the species. Again, it's a care guide. You can be this side or that side a bit, but in general, between 40 and 60%. And a lot of people will say 50 to 60 to be super specific or 55 to 65, whatever. I like to keep it so that one side is pretty moist and I do this by misting, right? Just using a, a regular mister. You can always use uh, something like a misting system if you like, but because I got a rather large collection of ball pythons, it would be very expensive to outfit them all with $300 misting systems. Just spray it once or twice a day and then you're good to go and you'll be able to keep that humidity. And the way that you know if you do with humidity and uh, the temperature is use a hydrometer and a thermometer and make sure that you're using a high quality one nothing super cheap you want it to be digital likely I mean if you want to get a high-end analog one be my guest but make sure that it's got good reviews and it's really trusted by a lot of people in the reptile community there's a million videos out there and articles to point you in the right direction if you're not sure which one to get and with the lighting they don't need a basking light I mean a lot of people like to have the heat from the top and that's why I've got the radiant heat panel but as long as your lights come on and go off at the same time or you cycle them throughout the year so that they have what's recommended which is somewhere between 10 and 15 hours somewhere around there of light uh, depending on the time of year and I light cycle mine because I do breed them so it, it triggers breeding behavior which is for another video but I always make sure they have right around 12 hours or so as high as 15 as low as 10 depending on the time of year and that, that way they know when it's day and night and they can have their circadian rhythm I think that's what it's called circadian rhythm uh, proper and, and makes for a healthy snake now we're gonna wrap it up with handling and diet in a second but if you're taking home your first ball python and you don't know what to look for there's a lot of things that you can look for to make sure that they're healthy uh, and I always suggest going to someone who actually knows something about ball pythons so you can ask questions PetSmart and Petco maybe not the best options but your local reptile shop or a reptile expo are perfect ways to get ball pythons and the person who bred them is likely to be there and that way you can ask them questions. So check for clear eyes, make sure there's no sh stuck shed on their eyes, there's no stuck shed on their body, uh, make sure that there's no bubbling around the mouth. And with ball pythons, they are head shy, but you can generally kind of get close to their head and just kind of, even if you just sort of like did a little squeeze on their head to make sure no bubbles come out very gently, of course, um, because that would indicate they have a respiratory infection, which they can get from it being too humid, but too cold or, or just too cold or a uh, myriad of things. So make sure that you check out their health and of course check their tail to their vent. They've got a vent, that's kind of where they poop and pee from and also they mate there as well. And make sure that doesn't have anything like prolapse, nothing sticking out of it. This is what it looks like when it's normal. Make sure it looks like this basically. And just for the humidity thing, if you keep it lower 40, make sure they've got a, a more humid place to go, like two hides on either ends of course, right? One on the hot side, one on the cool side. 
make sure that they got somewhere that is humid to go and they're not always sopping and not always very uh, dry. Okay, now the fun part. Now I'm handling the snake and, and I feel very confident. If you notice, I'm looking at the lens the entire time or watching myself to make sure I'm still in frame. I'm not paying too much attention to Pikachu because I can, I really trust this animal. I'm going to knock on wood because the, every time you say that, that's when you get bit. But with ball pythons, generally they're pretty chill. They're pretty calm. If they do bite you, it's maybe a defensive individual or you did something to startle them or something they're not comfortable. Um, but you're going to get to know your snake very well, very quickly because they're not boring, but they are pretty predictable in the most part, right? If they think you're food, of course, then don't don't handle the animal after you touch rats. Like if you touch food that they eat, they're gonna think that you're food. They're gonna bite you 100% of the time. So I just received rats. Uh, the guy came to my house, dropped the rats off. I threw them in the freezer, washed my hands like three times, used like an alcohol-based sanitizer. I made sure I don't smell like rats because I, I don't want to get bit by ball python. They will grab onto you. They'll coil, coil around you and it's just a bad time trying to get them off. Um, if that does happen to you, you can try water or uh, like an alcohol-based spray or like Listerine or something and that's how you get them off but hopefully you never have to experience that. So when you're handling them, support their whole body or let them support their whole body on you. So I've got them around my neck. Uh, I would never recommend just letting a ball python start wrapping around your neck. You'll notice that I can just separate him very easily. He's not coiled around. I wouldn't let him do that. Even though he's a small snake, he's only about four feet long. I wouldn't trust him because although I feel like I'm strong enough to rip him away, it only takes two seconds for your carotid arteries to close up and the animal doesn't mean to do that, it's by accident. I don't know this has ever happened before with a ball python, but with other snakes you've seen it before where they coil around their owner's neck and that's it, I mean, you're, 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 you're gone. So uh, make sure that you're, you're very safe, especially with children. Never leave a child unsupervised with a ball python, although I think ball pythons are great for children because they're good looking, they're big and impressive, but they're not dangerous to a child unless, I mean, an accident happens uh, and they're not breakable. Like they're not super fragile. Like that's a pretty hefty animal. Like it's got a little bit of weight to it and you're not gonna hurt it by accident most likely. You're gonna have to be too rough with it, which is another reason. Don't let it, your kid hurt the animal and don't let your animal hurt the kid. All right, we'll just wrap it up with, with diet. And this is the most important part besides water. I mean, always make sure it's got clean water and, and a water bowl that is big enough for them to get inside of because they do like to soak uh, when they shed. And this is something that's pretty normal. Before they shed, they'll go into blue, which means their eyes get like this film and look kind of blue. It's normal, don't freak out. They should shed all in one piece. If they don't, uh, do a little bit of research on how to get it off, soak them, make sure that it's warm, put them in a humid place, things like that. But if you got the water situation all figured out, uh, the next thing is diet. Rats are what I suggest right from the get-go. When you buy your snake, make sure they're on frozen thawed uh, because that's what I recommend. If you feed them live, a lot of uh, snakes will only eat live if they're used to eating live. It just stimulates their appetite in a way that a regular like dead rat wouldn't. So there's ways to get around this. I've got a whole video right here about how to get your snake to eat if it's not eating. But in general, rats are what they're gonna eat. If you start them on mice, it's sometimes hard to switch, so you can get rats pretty small. Uh, and then they're gonna work all the way up to a medium rat, uh, some maybe a big rat, but generally mediums are what I feed my uh, ball pythons, my adults anyway. And of course you can do things like warm it up so that it, uh, cause they've got these seek heat, heat seeking pits, seek heating pits, heat seeking pits on their face. So they'll capture that heat. Uh, if you warm it up, it makes it feel like it's alive. You can move it around with the tongs and once it grabs it, you can still kinda jiggle it around and pretend that it's alive. There's a million tricks. I pointed to the video if you need a little bit more information on that. And just to go back to the handling for a second, they're really gentle and uh, very slow moving, which is why I recommend them over even a corn snake, which a lot of people don't like that I say that, but I don't know, like a corn snake, I've never had one do this. Usually they're flighty and hard to handle. If you liked the video so far, bam, hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate that. And let's round it off with price and availability. I mean, can you find these things? Are they easy to find? Are they expensive? The nice thing is with these guys, if you want to morph like Pikachu, he's an albino, which in my area are like, I don't know, 300 bucks, something like that. Uh, but they're as cheap as 150 I've seen in parts of the States, especially as babies. Or if you want an all white one, or if you want one that's all black, you can get that. Or normal ones look amazing just by themselves. 
So there's a bunch of different ones to choose from, a million paint jobs that you could really want, anything that you want besides maybe a blue or purple one you can find. So that's awesome and you know if you just want a normal one you can get them for like 15 bucks. They're super cheap. You're never going to get a blue eyed leucistic for you know five bucks but you can get just a regular normal looking ball python for five bucks. I've literally bought one for five bucks in general probably closer to 50 or so. Uh, especially if you're getting it from someone that you don't know and you're not making a deal with other animals. But they're cheap, they're really easy to find, they're on every table at an expo, they're in every pet shop and reptile shop. Whew, this was a long video. But I appreciate you watching. And you know what, I took this video suggestion out of a poll that I put up. 50% of you said you want to see more care guides. The last ball python care guide I did was awful and I didn't really know how to edit videos back then. So I hope you liked it. Whatever you want to see next, put in the comments section. That's where I get all the ideas for the videos. If you want to buy a shirt, bam, I'd appreciate that. Thanks for rocking the Wiccan's Wicked Reptile shirts. And because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Thursday.